section 13.6 applications of exponential functions Okay, so let us first talk about exponential growth. So if we have an object that grows at a constant rate that is uh, proportional to its size, then we say that it grows exponentially. And, well, if it, something grows exponentially, it will grow with the following equation. A equals A sub 0, E to the KT. Um, and since I'm doing exponential growth, uh, let me assume here that K is greater than 0. So it's growth. If K were less than 0, then it would be decay. So A here stands for the amount at some particular time t a sub 0 a sub 0 is the initial amount k is the growth constant it is the rate at which uh, it grow the rate of growth is proportional to the uh, size of the object uh, t is the time well Examples of things that exhibit exponential growth are, well, uh, populations, and so population growth. So the size of a particular population at some time is... Uh, grows exponentially, at least initially. So until things like um, overcrowding and lack of resources uh, slows its growth, uh, things grow exponentially. And so uh, currently, um, you know, if you look at the world population, it's still growing exponentially. Um, things that also grow exponentially are things like money. So uh, if you're talking about uh, intra, uh, interest, uh, and so if you're talking about, say, if you borrow money, so um, say if you have some sort of loan, a credit card or whatever, uh, the amount that you owe uh, will grow exponentially. So uh, let me give you some formulas, uh, and, and really it's the same formula as above. But they, you know, historically have given these uh, differing uh, notation. So, a uh, simple interest formula. So, the simple interest formula is just A equals P 1 plus R to the T. And this is where uh, A is the amount of money. That you have at some particular time T. Uh, this will include both uh, how much you start with, the principal and the interest. That you happen to have at time T. P is the principal.
is the amount of money that you initially invest into this uh, financial instrument. R is the interest rate per time period and um, say uh, our time period is per year. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be per year. It could be per whatever unit of time. Uh, it's just usually we say um, do it per year. Uh, T is the time. And again, this is whatever time you have. Uh, since we're doing it per annum, uh, this will be the uh, time in years. And so the time uh, t is the same number of units of time as uh, the interest rate. And so if the interest rate is per month, uh, then t will be the number of months. And if the interest rate is per year, then t is the number of years. So whatever your unit of time is. Uh, so note that in this case, um, it really does look like what we wrote above. Uh, the only difference is that, uh, you know, uh, if we let A0 be P and E to the K is 1 plus R, uh, then, and, and remember E is Euler's number, it's just some fixed number. Um, so, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write in terms of K. So let K equal LN one plus R. Uh, then uh, with that, uh, this particular simple interest rate just looks like the exponential growth. Then this uh, formula is the above exponential growth. Formula. So it's just historically we've given it a slightly different notation, but you know obviously these two things are this are the same formula, just given differing notation for them. Uh, let me do, oh, well, uh, compound interest formula. So the compound interest formula. So if they happen to give you uh, your interest compounded, uh, uh, compounded, say, several times per year, then what they'll do is, um, let's say that they compound monthly. Then they will give you one twelfth of your interest uh, every month. And so in the first month, they'll give you one twelfth of your interest of what you have. The second month, they'll give you another one twelfth of the interest, but uh, since they've already given you one, tw uh, they've already given you some interest that was put into your account. That means that this will include interest upon the interest they've already given you, and so they get, they're giving you interest uh, is building upon the additional money they've given you, and so th the formula is A equals P one plus R over N to the N T. Well, A is the same. A is the amount. The amount of money in your account after uh, T. And um, this includes both your principal and your interest. P is the principal. It is the amount of money that uh, you put into the account initially. R 
is the interest rate. per some unit of time, and let's say per annum. N is the number of compounds per unit of time. So let's say N here is the uh, number of compounds periods per year since we're uh, since I have R is per annum again it doesn't have to be per annum but uh, that's usual and T again is the number of units of time and it, we're saying that it's uh, per year so T is the uh, number of years so the time in years okay. now uh, suppose that we don't compound once per year or twice per year. We compound every fraction. So not, not once a year, twice a year, you know, semi-annually, or monthly, 12 times a year, or daily, 365 days per year. We do it every fraction of every second. And so uh, we do it, you know, continuously. And so the continuously... compounded interest formula. And so the contingency compounded interest formula is A equals P E to the RT. Well, where everything is the same as above, A is the amount of money you have after T years, or after T time, uh, given some initial uh, amount P uh, invested at a uh, rate of R contingency compounded. P is the principal. It is the initial amount of money that you invest. R is the interest rate. And it's per unit of time, let's say per annum. And T is the number of units of time, so let's say the time in years. Okay. And of course, E is just the number E, um, Euler's number. And so, uh, obviously, this is the same as our original formula. Uh, it's just that... So note, let a sub 0 equal p and k equals r, then this is our original, this becomes our original our original um, exponential growth formula. So uh, this continuously, uh, continuously compound interest formula, again, is just uh, our original formula for exponential growth. OK. Um, let me give you some concepts, uh, let's say, of doubling time. And so this is the time. Let's give you a notation. Uh, T sub 2 denotes the t doubling time. This is the time it takes until
the amount doubles in size. And so if you have some quantity that grows exponentially and suppose that it starts at some amount then the amount of time it takes until it doubles in size it's called its doubling size and it turns out that the doubling size has a nice formula And so the doubling size, the doubling time is just ln2 over k, where k is the uh, growth constant. Okay. Um, well, similarly, we also have exponential decay. And so exponential decay. Let lambda be some constant uh, greater than zero. Then the formula for exponential decay is just a equaling a sub zero e to the minus lambda t. Okay. Where a again is the amount at time t. a sub zero is the initial amount. Uh, lambda is the decay constant. And t is, well, the time in whatever unit of time that you have. So things that uh, decay exponential. Uh, let me just see if in my original, if I call, if I let t be, yeah, I just called it time. Now, um, if you're doing this as a mathematician, we actually just write everything as a equal a sub zero e to the kt, and then we let k be greater than zero or less than zero. But chemists and physicists, uh, they actually give it two differing letters. And so I'm giving it to you here as two differing letters uh, because that's the way they do it in physics and chemistry. Okay, so... Um, Things, examples of things that decay exponentially. Well, radioactive substances. So, so example is radioactive decay. So you start out with some, let's say, I don't know, uranium-238. And it decays to, you know, eventually lead or whatever. And so uh, you start out with some uranium. And eventually, you know, you have this uranium block, maybe, you know, one pound of uranium. Then after a few million years, maybe it's only, you know, even though it's a big block, the still big block of objects, uh, the amount that's uranium is maybe only half of that or maybe a third of it. And so uh, this block of object is no longer uranium. It's uranium and other substances. And so what's happened is that uh, it is that this substance has decayed. Okay, so um, half-life. So very similar to what we had for doubling time, we have something called half-life. So the half-life 
is the amount of time. So is the time it takes. For half of the until the amount becomes one half in size. So it's going to, you know. Uh, be half as large. And so, suppose we have something that's decaying exponentially. Uh, start there. So suppose we decay. So we start out with some amount and then the amount of time it takes till it's half of that original amount is the half-life. And well, the half-life has a formula. Well, that's ln2 over lambda. So it's basically the same as your uh, formula that we had from before for the doubling time. Of course, if we want to do to do the tripling time, it would just be ln three over k. If we wanted to do the one third time, uh, it would be ln three over lambda. Okay. Oh, that's right. We call these a sub zeros. So let me call this a zero, one half a zero. Okay. And then, of course, let me check if I. Ah, of course, I didn't. So let's call this a zero and one half a zero. Usually you call it P if you're dealing with money. So I'll call it A sub zero. Um, okay, so let's uh, do some examples. Let's say on page 567. <coughs> <coughs> let's say problem number four. If $1,000 is invested at six and three quarters percent compounded per annum. Compounded continuously How much Will the investment be worth after 12 years. Okay, uh, so let's do that. So let's write down the continuously compounded interest formula. A equals PE to the RT 
So the amount that we initially invest is $1,000. The interest rate R is six and three quarter percent, so that's six point seven five percent interest, written as a decimal point zero six seven five, and we want to do this for twelve years, so T is twelve. I want to figure out what A is. after 12 years. And so let's plug that in. So A is equal to P E to the R T. And so the amount A is equal to one thousand e to the point eight one and so <clears throat> I have that the amount A is approximately two thousand two hundred forty seven point nine zero seven nine eight seven okay so let's uh, round this to the nearest penny and so it's approximately two thousand two hundred forty seven dollars and ninety one cents if they round up or ninety cents if they truncate depending on uh, how you're investing it okay uh, let me do Problem number, oh, let's say, so we did four. Compendu. Let's do problem number six. How long? Will it take? An investment, an account. With an annual interest. rate of 9% compounded continuously Oh, uh, I have, I'm putting in two different things. How long will it take an initial investment? Okay, so I, I, I've... I've combined two separate problems. Six, how long will it take? How long will it, will it take? An initial investment of 
I want to take an initial investment of $7,500 to reach $10,000 if it is continuously compounded at an interest rate of 2.5%. Per annum, give your answer. in years and months. Okay, so this is continuously compounded interest. So let's use the continuously compounded interest formula. So you initially have $7,500. After a certain time, you have $10,000. Your interest rate is 3.75%, and so written as a decimal, it's 0 0.0375 per year, and I want to figure out how many years that will be. Okay, so let's plug this in. So the amount is equal to the principal times e to the r t. So let's divide both sides of my equation by 75, except for one small detail. I wrote this wrong. There, 10,000. Okay. Uh, so you start uh, with 7,500 and you eventually get 10,000. So divide both sides of the equation by 7,500. And so that's 100, uh, so you can reduce that. That's a nice number. And so four-thirds. Is equal to E to your point zero three seven five t Let's take ln of both sides of my equation. So this is equal to, so this is equal to uh, ln four thirds. Ln e to any exponent is the exponent. Divide both sides of your equation by 0 0.0375. And so T is equal to LN four thirds over point zero three seven five and so plugging that into your calculator, you get LN of four thirds divided by point zero three seven five. 
0.67152192932 years. Okay. And so uh, there are seven years. And 0.67 months, uh, 0.67 years. And so since there are 12 months in a year, that's uh, 8. 0 0.058263184 months. And so approximately seven years, eight months. Okay, good. <clears throat> let me do, oh, let's say problem number 10. How long does it take for a deposit of P dollars to become two P dollars at ten percent uh, interest Compounded continuously. And again, give your answer in years and months. Of course, we have a uh, formula for doubling period, uh, the doubling time, uh, but I'm not going to use that, uh, even though I could have. But So it's uh, continuously compounded interest. So A equals P E to the RT. A is 2p, p is p, uh, r is 10%, which is 0 0.10. t is years, and we want to figure out how many years. Okay, so I have a equals P E to the R T. Divide both sides of your equation by P. So 2 equals E to the point 1 T. Take ln of both sides of your equation. So ln 2 ln2 is equal to ln et in the exponent is just the exponent, 0.1t. Divide both sides of my equation by 0.1. And so t equals ln2 over 0.1. And so t is, well, 
approximately. Well, and I should note I should note that well, uh, since this was the doubling time, and the interest rate was 0 0.1, I plugged into oops the doubling time formula. It would just be ln2 over 0.1, and Voila, that's what I got. So again, using the doubling formula, I would have got the same thing. And so, uh, plug into your calculator, you get 6.93147186 years, which is approximately... six years and uh, 0.93147186 years. Multiply that by 12, since there are 12 months in a year. 11.177666167 months. And so T is equal to approximately six years and let's say 11 months. Okay, uh, let me do problem number 32. Uh, actually, let's see if there are any. So that's really all I have for exponential growth. Um, let me do problem number 30. Let me do 30. Yeah, let me do 30. So radioactive strontium-90 um, has a half-life of years of around 20 years a I'm sorry of around 12.4 years. So, radioactive uh, strontium-90 has a half-life of around 12.4 uh, years. A. How much of a 20 gram sample will remain after 20 years.
how long will it be uh, before well until five grams remain okay so let's do this okay so this decays exponentially so it looks like and let's do part a first well in both cases it decays exponentially so it's a zero e to the minus lambda t so that's two part a well in all cases uh, it says it has a half-life of 12.4 years so the half-life is let's say 12.4 And so let's do part A. So it says uh, you start with 20 grams. And how much remain after 20 years? Okay. So you want to figure out how much remains. Okay, so we start out with 20 grams. We have some decay constant. And you want to figure out how much remains. Well, unfortunately, I don't know the decay constant. So I'm going to have to figure out this decay constant. Well, to figure that out, I know that in 12.4 years, one half of what I originally had will decay. And so if I start out with 20 grams in 12.4 years, I'll have 10 grams. Divide by 20. And so 0.5 is equal to e to the negative 12.4 lambda. Take L into both sides of my equation. So I have ln 0.5 is equal to ln e to any exponent is just the exponent, negative 12.4 lambda. Let me divide both sides of my equation by negative 12.4. And so I have lambda is equal to lambda is equal to negative ln 0.5 over 12.4. Okay, so now let's continue and figure out the rest of part A. And of course, for part B, I can also use this fact. Okay, so um, part A says, well, I start out with 20 grams. I then plug in my lambda. Notice that the negatives will cancel. And then my T is, well, 20 years. So I have that A is equal to 20 E to the, the negatives cancel. I have 20 divided by 12.4. Um, so I can reduce that. Eh, let, let's just keep it like that. 20 ln 0.5 over 12.4. And that's how much you have. 
And so if I plug that into my calculator, I get uh, 20 times 0.5 ln divided by 12.4, approximately uh, negative 1. Multiply that, uh, raise that to the power e, multiply by 20. So I have 6.538795342 grams. So in approximately 20 years, So in 20 years, you have approximately 6.5 grams of uh, strontium-90. Okay, let's do part B. So how long until, if you start with 20 grams, so you start here with 20 grams. And we found what lambda was. Uh, lambda was a negative ln 0.5 over 12.4. Okay. And um, the amount that we want is 5 grams. Well, you can... You can guess how long it will be. Well, in 12.4 years, there'll be 10 grams. In 24.8, there'll be 5 grams. So I guess it's 24.8, but let's actually do, um, it should be 24.8, 24.8 years, but let's uh, actually do this. So A is equal to A0 e to the minus lambda t. Okay, so let's plug in. So I have A equals the original amount 20. Oh, A is 5. 5 equals 20 E to the minus lambda ln negative ln 0.5 over 12.4 T. Okay. And so I have that. 5 is equal to 20 e to the ln 0.5 t over 0.5 t over 12.4. Uh, divide both sides of my equation by 20. And so I have 0.25 is equal to E to the T ln 0.5 over 12.4. Let me take ln of both sides of my equation. And so I get ln 0.25 is equal to ln E t in the exponent. It's just the exponent. T ln 0.5 over 12.4. Multiply both sides of your equation by 12.4. So I get 12.4 ln 0.25 equals T ln 0.5. Divide both sides of your equation by ln 0.5. And so t is equal to 12.4 ln 0.25 over ln 0.5. Well, if you plug into your calculator, it should come out to a nice number. 
So ln 0.25 over ln 0.5. is 24.8 years. Oh, wait. Oh, it didn't say. So it's 24 years and approximately uh, 10 months or something. Um, so that's A and B. Uh, let me do problem number 31. So the radioactive element polonium has a half life. of 140 days. If 15 milligrams of this substance decays exponentially find the following a how much of this substance would remain after 60 days B how long would it take before it becomes four milligrams. Okay, so let's do this. So I have that the, this decays exponentially. So A equals A0 e to the minus lambda t. And well, um, the original amount is 15 grams. And uh, the half-life is 140 days. And uh, let us determine from here uh, what uh, lambda is. Okay, so um, we've done it several times. So maybe I will just plug in <coughs> um, the formula for half-life. And so I know that the half-life... is ln2 over lambda. And so I have that 140 
equals ln2 over lambda. multiply by lambda and so 140 lambda is ln2 divide by 140 so lambda equals ln2 over 140 okay good so now let me uh, try to answer each of these so how much will remain after 60 days? T will be 60 days. How much will remain? Okay, so let's uh, determine that. So A equals A0, which I think was 15. E to the minus lambda which is ln2 over 140 times t, which was 60. So a equals 15e to the minus uh, 60 over 140, which is uh, 3 over 7. So 3 ln 2 over 7. And so A is equal to, oh, actually that's not too horrible, that. Okay. And so that's the amount. And so A is approximately, so let's do ln of 2 times 3 divided by 7 times 15. Approximately 11.1449517 uh, grams. So approximately 11.1 grams. It's uh, approximately it is it's equal to fifteen over um, the seventh root of eight. B. So was it fifteen divided by the seventh root of eight? Yes. Okay. Um, B. How long will it take before it becomes 4 grams? Okay, so um, A is 4, and I want to figure out how long. Okay, so we start out. So we want to have 4 grams after some amount of time. We start out with 15 grams. We decay exponentially at the decay rate of ln2 over 140. And I want to figure out how long. Okay, so let me divide both sides of my equation by 15. And so 4 over 15 is equal to e to the minus ln 2, well, let's say minus t, ln 2 over 140. Uh, let me take ln of both sides of my equation, so ln is 
So I have ln four over fifteen equals ln e to any exponent is the exponent. negative t ln 2 over 140. Let me multiply both sides of my equation. By negative 140. So I have a negative 140 ln 4 over 15 equals t ln 2. Divide both sides of your equation by ln 2. And so t is equal to a negative 140 ln 4 over 15 divided by ln 2. And so let's plug that into our calculator and see what we get. And so it's uh, f negative four, 140 times ln of 4 over 15 divided by ln of 2, hmm. which is 266.9646834. And what is this in days? This is in days. Okay. And so T is approximately 267 days. Okay, uh, let me do problem number 32. Almost all living things Uh, take up carbon as they grow. The carbon well, carbon, I'll say, carbon comes in two forms. normal carbon 12 and radioactive carbon 14 while living Carbon-14 is continuously replenished. So that organisms have the same ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 as the uh, surrounding environment, which has uh, been constant for the last nearly a million years um, after the organism dies
carbon-14 decays. exponentially. Decays exponentially. Okay. It is known that the half-life of carbon-14 is around 5,730 years. Find the age of a bone with only 30% of the original carbon-14 present. Okay, so <clears throat> we have that carbon-14 decays exponentially according to this formula. The half-life is 5,730 years. The amount will be 30% uh, of the original amount of carbon-14 present. I want to figure out the age of this bone. Well, let's, we know that the formula for the half-life is ln2 over lambda. And so we found from before that that said that lambda was just ln2 over the half-life. We did that in the previous problem. And so lambda is just and then 2 over 5300 5730 okay so let's plug in we have that the amount a is the original amount oh of course the amount we have is uh, 0 0.3 30% of the original is equal to the original amount e to the minus lambda ln2 over 5730t. Let me divide both sides of my equation by a sub 0. And of course, we're assuming that the original amount is not 0. It wouldn't make sense if the original amount was 0. And so the a zeros cancel, so I have 0.3 is equal to e to the minus ln2 e to the minus ln2 over 5730t let me take ln of both sides of my equation and so I have that ln 0.3 is equal to ln e to any exponent is just the exponent negative t ln 2 over 5730 let me multiply both sides of my equation 
by 5730. Let's say a negative 5730. And so I have that negative 5730 ln 0.3 is equal to a t ln, point, ln of 2. Divide both sides of my equation by ln 2. And so I have that t is equal to negative 5,730 ln 0.3 over ln 2. And so plug it into your calculator. I get that this is approximately 9,952.812855 years. So I don't know, let's say it's approximately uh, 9,952.8 uh, years. So nearly 10,000 years. Okay, let me do one last example. So, um, so we, some Indians are hunting on some island and some Dutch traders say, do you want to sell this island? So they say, sure. So these Indians uh, sold uh, Manhattan uh, for, I think, uh, 60 guilders, uh, let's say $40 to um, uh, these Dutch traders. Um, and this was around 450 years ago. And being very wise, uh, financially savvy Indians, uh, suppose that they invest it in stock. And so they invest, of course, 450, it was 450 years ago, uh, there was no stock market, but let's say that there was. So they invest uh, all of it, let's say, in stocks. Uh, in, let's call it, uh, the Indian Trading Company. Rather than the Dutch Trading Company, I'll call it the Indian Trading Company. And uh, they get, uh, let's say, 10%, 10.5% uh, interest per year compounded continuously. This is... Uh, similar to the amount of money you would get in the stock market uh, if you invested it over a period of, you know, 100 years or so. So it's a, that's a normal sort of interest rate you get. Um, how much? How much is... This forty dollars, this forty dollar investment worth now. So if you invested forty dollars um, at ten and a half percent 
interest compounded continuously. Well, let's see how much they have. So let's plug into the uh, continuously compounded interest formula. A equals PE to the RT. Well, they invest uh, $40. The interest is 10.5% compounded uh, per annum compounded continuously. And the number of years is 450. And I want to figure out how much money they now have. So let's plug this in. So this is just a simple plug-in type problem. So A equals P 40 E to the R 0 0.10. Oh, let's make it a little bit. So A equals your initial investment, $40. E to the R 0 0.105 T, which is 450. Okay, so let's plug that in. And so this is equal to A is equal to 40E to the 47.25 dollars. And well, let's see how much this is in money. So plug into your calculator, you get 1.3. Two five seven eight eight five four two zero dollars, and so you have approximately thousand million billion trillion quadrillion contains quadrillion contains sestillion 13 sestillion 257 quintillion 885 quadrillion 420 trillion dollars and, and some and, you know once it gets past the two uh my calculator didn't give me the rest of the digits but and you know some others like billions and millions and etc dollars uh so it's a lot okay so uh i guess that's it for today and i will see you tomorrow.